Welcome to Driver Electric with Dominic. I'm Dominic, and this is everything wrong with my Tesla Model 3. It's a 2018 rear-wheel drive. I've had it for about a year, just about, and there are a number of things wrong with it, and I'm just going to go through them here, itemize them. These are things that you might uh, run into yourself if you're buying a used Model 3, and yeah. And so we'll look at what we have going wrong, and then maybe we'll also in the future address some of these issues and show you how to fix them. All right, let's go. The first big issue I need to talk about is the AC charging. Right. So when I first got this car, I picked it up in Illinois and I drove it all the way back here charging on superchargers. Uh, and I didn't notice the charge rate uh, on, on AC. Uh, it was somewhat diminished. So now I can only charge on, uh, you know, just partial amps, like maybe eight amps or something. So the, it's got this thing on, that's on top of the battery called the PCS, or the Power Conversion System. And this basically handles the current um, and you know feeds the battery from the AC. And it's, it's uh, divided into three different blocks. And two of my blocks are not functioning. So I'm on the last block. And if it breaks, I won't be able to AC charge anymore. And I'll have to take it to Jacksonville and it costs, it'll cost about $2,000 probably. Um, to get it, get it fixed properly, replaced, and that's a lot of money. So I'm waiting, I guess, until it goes out, or until I come into a bunch of money and I have some, you know, I can freely spend. Uh, anyway, so that's an issue now, and I'll show you this on the screen. What that looks like. All right, here we are charging, and as you can see, I'm at 16 amps, maximum 40 amps. So I could, you know, crack this up here. You know. I can put this as high as I want and uh, nothing changes. It's still charging at the same speed. Um, it doesn't really give the, this screen, do, this screen doesn't show, oh, I got my message warning here though. Power grid or vehicle issue limiting AC charging. Unplug and retry, try different charging location. So I'm getting this message and you can also get that same notification up here. Uh, PCS underscore A019 power grid or vehicle issue limiting AC charging. So the power grid isn't the issue and the vehicle isn't the issue. So I have a, a video already about this already and you can see the link up there above here. I'll add it. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, going to be an expensive fix. But that's, you know, just one of the things you have to look for when you're buying a, a you know, a used Tesla Model 3. That's not under warranty, or if uh, under warranty, you know, could happen under warranty, and if it's, which would be great because then you could take it and get it fixed for free. Out of warranty, it does not, it does not get fixed. Okay, so we'll pull this down, and hmm, interesting. My charging screen has gone away. Okay, so this is the uh, screen on the inside as it's charging, and as you can see, it's it's only getting four kilowatts at the max. And it's only getting uh, 16 out of 40 amps because um, I can only get 16 amps because of the PCS failure. The second issue was also there on my car when I got it, but I didn't see it until I got it home. I think it was home. Uh, so yeah, right here on the back wheel well, I don't know if you can even see that there. It's like a little ding. I'll just move you in real quick, close. Right, so yeah, there's this little ding. It's not a big deal, really, and um, I'm not sure I'm going to do anything about it. Maybe I'll ask uh, ask a professional or something if that can be popped out, like a pop a dent kind of situation. I'm not sure that it can be, but if it can be up, I'll do that. But if it can't, it's fine. I mean, so I walked all around the car when I went to pick it up and looked at everything, looking for stuff like exactly like that, and I totally missed it. So it's not obviously a super obvious flaw. In the right light, you can notice it. Anyway, that's number two. Number three, this car has hella paint chips. It's from the Chicago area, and I believe they drove on the highway with the roads are all salted or sanded or whatever they do up there, and falling close behind other cars. So the front of the car is like sandblasted. Okay, maybe it's not quite that drastic sounding, but they're a lot. 
a lot of little kind of paint things missing, like not chips exactly. Let's show you. All right, so here's one. Here's more. There's a. This is probably like the worst one. It's kind of big. It's kind of yeah. Uh, can we see this one? Oh, my fingers on it. Okay. It's just like little places where it's, you know, the paint is like basically missing. And it looks like it'll just take like a drop or two, maybe with on a toothpick or something to like, you know, fill them in. And the, I can't really see that one very well, but yeah, there are just a bunch on the front though. Uh, I think they're mostly fixable. But uh, I have to do that. I will show you. I'll take a shot at doing that. I'll, a shot at fixing those, and we'll share that with you. All right. What's next? Okay. This next one's a little scary. Uh, this is a chip in the glass, in the rear glass. Let's flip you around here. And I believe this was on the car when I picked it up, and I did not see it until later when I got home. Sometime after I got home. Yeah. It's. It's just like a little chip. Uh, it's not spreading. There's no, there's no, I think it's going to be fine. Um, I, the only way to fix this, I believe, would be to replace that whole glass, which is a lot of money. And I think it's going to be just fine, just like that. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to touch this one. All right. So this next issue happened after I owned it. It's basically a slow leak. I've got a slow leak and uh, it's on the front on the driver's on the passenger side sorry front tire and uh, let's take a look at what's causing it all right so here's my tire and here is what I believe is causing my slow leak so I can pump up the uh, pressure a little bit above spec and uh, it won't drop too far it's like super slow so I can drive for a couple weeks probably uh, obviously this is not the best idea or the best solution or no solution really. So uh, I'm gonna take this to a, a store and get the uh, get it fixed, I guess. If it's fixable, maybe it's not fixable. Some, I don't know, we'll see. And maybe at the same time, I'll have the uh, tires rotated because I think I've got uh, more tread here on the front than I do on, my, on the back. And yeah, so that's something I wanted to do anyway. So a little trip to the tire store isn't in my future, I believe. All right, next. The next thing. Is something of a self-inflicted wound <laughs> something I messed up with and uh, let me just show you real quick okay see this little thing this is like a GoPro mount so I had a camera mounted on here and then I rolled down my window uh, with this connected to it because I can be an idiot sometimes and uh, yeah I didn't stop I was I don't know what I was doing I can't remember now it was all it was a bunch of stuff going on but anyway, it went down, and let me just spin this around so you can see. Right, this damage right here. So my door card got impacted by this part of the the, the clamp. I see, it just like rolled down, and then dug in the. And you know, the, this, these windows they don't give up, man. They'll they'll push, and they pushed hard enough. These are not sharp edges here at all, but it, you know it. Push this right down in here and made this just you know messed up the the vinyl so yeah it needs a new door card that's about uh, probably 300 bucks looking on eBay but uh, I'll I'll be doing that and I'll show you how it's done all right so the next thing is another self-inflicted wound my stupidity so let me spin this around and explain what happened. And we're looking at this clamp again. <laughs> and here we go. So this clamp it was in the front windshield. I was filming, you know, going something, a dude loop or something. And then I left it there. And I left it there way too long. So it's totally on me. This is my fault. And eventually the, uh, the suction gave out. And I was just driving. And all of a sudden this thing just fell. And when it did, it hit the screen. So now I have this little chip at the top edge of my screen, which sucks. I mean, it's not very, it's not really noticeable, but I know it's there. And then on the bottom down here, there seems to be some sort of other kind of similar kind of thing. I don't know if this is from the same incident or not, 
but I never noticed it before, so I kind of think that it might be, you know, like this is, yeah. So I think that's going to be another three hundred dollars, and uh, I'm going to take a stab at replacing this thing, and we'll show you in a future video on how to do that. I'm not sure if this next thing is a uh, an issue necessarily, but sometimes. When I go from reverse to drive, you know, stop, not every time, but sometimes it makes, I hear this like clinking sound in the back, this metallic clinking. And it sounds like it's coming from the differential or the gearbox or something up in the motor um, thing in the back. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to stick this phone under the car and move forward and see if it captures it or not. So I'm not sure if this is an issue. I'm a little scared to Google it <laughs> because... <laughs> I don't know how much, uh, how big a deal it is, and you know maybe it's better to find out the hard, not the hard way, but you know when things naturally fail. I mean, some people have said this is not an issue, have told me this is not an issue. All Teslas make noise, but this is kind of weird because it's only occasional. So anyway, I'm kind of curious of what's going on. So let's see if we can uh, document the sound. All right, here we go under the car. Under, under, and up in here all right now I guess I'm gonna get up in the car and put it into uh, drive and see what happens I don't think I heard it. I got lots of junk in my hair. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So I don't think I heard it that time. Um, we'll try three things. Maybe I can uh, find, get it happening, or notice the happening, and rec and record it and document it for you. Uh, but if not, just take my word for it. There's a clinking sometimes, and it's super mm, worrying. I think is the word. All right, so that is everything wrong with my Tesla Model 3 2018 rear-wheel drive. It's got full self-driving, by the way. Um, right, so yeah, we got the uh, charging issues. We got the little ding on the back wheel well. Uh, what else do we have? A uh, little chip on the back of the glass. Uh, the driver's side door card. The center screen has little chips in it. Uh, my bad. Uh, there's a nail in my one of my front tires. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I think that might be it. Oh, it could make that clinking sound. Possibly that's an issue. I'm not sure. We'll find out. And I think that's basically it. All right. So thanks for uh, hanging out and, and uh, going over those with me. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.